Hello again. I'm um, just back from n equals eight, and I thought I'd dive into n equals nine as well. Um, and what we'll try and do during this one is we'll try and extend the previous location demo, and we're going to extend it with a new plugin. And this plugin is going to be the Messenger plugin, um, and we're going to do it to just slightly improve the architecture within the PCL. So actually, during this, we probably won't notice any differences at all in terms of the um, UIs. But in terms of the architecture, it's much closer to what I'd actually do to in a real project to use um, the location. And it also starts introducing this messenger. Now, for those of you who aren't really familiar with messengers or event aggregators, I've set up this very, very fascinating slideshow. And it's a slideshow that is about messengers. Um, and messengers, as I say, they're also sometimes called event aggregators. And they are a way of getting um, tokens, event notifications, messages, sorry about the messages that are coming in in the background. And they're a way of getting those from um, one place to another, from one component to another within your app. Um, and so what you typically do is you set up, you know, something called a publisher. And that can be any of your components. So it might be a singleton, like it could be, you know, some sort of network hub that's listening for things, you know, notifications of chat messages or something on the network. Um, it could be, you know, a location hub like we'll do today, which is just going to look at the location watcher and then update our uh, clients as, we, as it needs to be. Um, or it could be, you know, any kind of, of thing. It could be a file watcher. Um, it could be something to do with a gyroscope or it could be something to do with your business logic. Um, and then once you've set up a publisher, what you do is then you will have a subscriber within your application. So this might be a view or a view model. Um, it might be, you know, another component within your app. Um, and in fact, it might be that you have more than one subscriber for any particular message. So, you know, location might be going to three or four different places in your app. And you can do that because the messenger just decouples that publisher from the subscriber or subscribers to those messages. And so then what happens is once you've set this framework up, then the publisher will create a message. And a message is, is pretty much defined by being its class, by its type of message. And it will then send that message using the messenger to whatever subscribers are listening, which may be zero, it may be one, it could be a hundred. Um, it will just be up to, you know, they'll, they'll each get a reference to the same object, they won't get copies, and then it'll just get spread out. Um, and that's what the messenger is. Um, so I hope you like that animation. Um, and I'll get on with some code. So if we go to our previous project, and I've just moved it into a new folder, so let's do it. Um, so this is going to be in projects two in n plus one and it's in location and message now then what we should do is we should be able to load it up and we've got the same project as we just did in n equals eight if you don't know what that is then go and take a look at the video it's only 20 minutes long and it's quite straightforward to see and what we do is if we want to decouple at the moment so we've got this first view model looks like this and at the moment this first view model is using the location watcher directly and all I'm going to do is try and move that out into a service instead so what I do is I'm going to create a service folder it doesn't have to be called services but it's what I kind of mainly do and in there I'm going to create my service which is going to be for the location so let's do it add new class and this is going to be my location hub I'm going to call it And so here's my location hub. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see it. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to have that this location hub is actually going to uh, host to this watcher. So I'm going to copy the information across from the view model. And hopefully ReSharper will uh, do the types for me. And then I'll also copy these on location and on error handlers as well. There we go. So you can see all I've got, and obviously this won't work at the moment because I don't have a Latin along, so I'll just comment those out. But you can see all I've got is I've got a, a simple um, location hub that starts this guy up, um, the, the watcher, um, and then listens to the location error. Now what I'd probably like to do is I would probably like to actually, um, you know, ensure, um, no, no, what, what I'd like to do, sorry about that, just thinking aloud is what I'd like to do is I'd like to send a message from this location hub 
out into the messenger hub into that bus at the top of the screen previously whenever a location comes in so to do that what I do is I go to the references and I do manage NuGet packages and what I do is I go to MVVM cross I could type it with help and I look for messenger and we'll find that we've got our messenger plugin at the top so I install it and once we've done that then you know we have this extra assembly a uh, plugin dot messenger here it is in our uh, in our references which means we can use it so what we're going to do is we're going to um, also ask that when we get created I'd like to have a messenger as well so I believe the interface that I'm looking for is called messenger hub maybe not maybe it's just called messenger it's called messenger it used to be called messenger hub apologies for that and what I'll do is I'll take a copy of that guy as well. So here we go, private read-only messenger. And so we've got our copies of Messenger and Messenger Hub in those two places. And what I'll also do is I really would like this guy just to sit around, but um, I only really want to start him. Uh, no, no, I'll just leave it. It's, it's fine. It's going to stay started. I could change the way he initializes. I could add more of an interface to here. Um, but what I will do is I'm going to add to, no, keep going on the same message. Uh, so once we've got this messenger, um, we need to send a message. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a public class. And it's going to be a location message. And in order to make it from a message, we have to inherit from a message class. And this message is called MDX message. Um, and what you'll see straight away is it's saying, well, you know, there's a constructor needed. So we use ReSharper to generate the constructor. Um, and then what we need to do is actually provide a body for that message. So what we're going to do is we would like to pass it in, you know, the lat and the long as the, the body. So we'll do that. Oops, double lat. And we'll pass in get and set. And we'll pass in double long get and set. And obviously you could architect it differently so you didn't have these. Maybe you should, maybe you should have these as privates. And then you should add them to the constructor. So we'll do that. Initialize field from constructor. Initialize field from constructor. So that's the way that our um, location message will be constructed. And then what we need to do is actually send it. So back here in the location hub, when a location comes in, we want to send it. And to do that, what we do is we create one. So we do var message equals new location message. And obviously the first thing as an argument is the sender. So we pass in this because that's who the sender is. Um, you know, if you're used to event notifications then it's exactly the same sort of idea. Um, and then we need to pass in the lat and the long. So we've got those in this commented out code. So I'll just use them. Let me use them. So there's our new message created. Um, and then what we need to do is send it. And to send it, all we do is we do messenger.publish. And we pass in the message. And that is actually a generic. So what's actually being called here is a, a publish with location message as the type. Um, but obviously, you don't need that because it's, it's inferred by the compiler. Um, and that's it. That's all that happens is you know we get this in and we publish it on. And the advantage of putting it out into this location hub is that it's more of a um, it's more testable for one thing because you can you can work with just this location hub rather than working with the uh, the plugin which actually talks to real GPS. Um, but also it's shareable across multiple view models if you wanted to. So now let's also just add a simple marker interface to this guy so that we know that it'll always be created. And what I'll do is I'll call it a lie location hub interface and I'll just create it as an empty interface. And why did I call it a hub rather than a service? I don't know. So let me just also rename it as a hub, as a service. Service. And that way, as soon as it's called service, you can see here, as soon as it's called service, it means that our generic IOC rules, these guys, will just work when we need them. Yeah. But remember here, we're registering them as lazy singletons. So unless somebody actually asks for one of these guys, we'll never get a... Um, we'll never get the, the singleton created. So what we'll do is in our first view model, 
we now need to remove this geolocation watcher uh, because the first view model is now going to just get hold of one of these singletons instead. So this is going to be an eye location service it needs. Um, and it's not actually going to use this interface, but it's just going to have it there so that it's definitely created when the view model needs it. Um, and then the other thing that we want is we want our first view model now to pick up these messages. So we want it to pick up these guys. Um, and what we're going to do for that is we're going to get hold of a copy of the messenger here as well. Yeah. Um, and what we're actually going to do is we would like, when we get hold of that messenger, we'd like to subscribe. And you can see here we've got various options about how we subscribe. So hopefully you can see those. Let me just oops, zoom in. So you can see there's a subscribe. There's a subscribe on main thread. And there's a subscribe on thread pool thread. Um, and, and you know, subscribe just says deliver me on whichever thread you feel like. So it might be the UI thread, it might be a background thread, it might be a network thread, who knows? Um, subscribe on thread pool thread always guarantees that you're not on the main thread, you're going to be on a background thread. And subscribe on main obviously make sure that you're on that U that UI thread, that apartment threading um, that you're used to in UI programs. Um, so here we don't really mind what thread we get called on, so I'm just going to use subscribe. Um, and what you pass in is you pass in what you would like in terms of um, you know where you'd like to be called. So here I'm just going to put on location message as the method. Um, and obviously that won't exist to start with. So I'll create it. Um, but there's some, uh, and obviously also we do actually have to. Uh, no, that should be alright. Why is it complaining? Uh, okay, so it, what it's done is it's generated it as an MVX message, but actually we don't want that. What we want is a location message, and that should have cleared it up, but it doesn't seem to. So what I'll do is I'll just add the, the parameters. So what we're saying is, please, 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 when you, you know, I want to know if anybody, and it is, it can be multiple publishers as well as multiple subscribers, if anyone publishes a location message, please deliver it to me. Yeah, and the last thing we have to do is actually this returns a token. Yeah, which is a type MVX subscription token. And we have to store that. And the reason we have to store it is to do with the way that um, the um, MVX messenger uses weak referencing. Now this gets a bit complicated in terms of um, understanding CLR memory management. But basically what happens is this token is the only thing that keeps our subscription alive. Um, and if the token goes out of scope, if, for example, the first view model gets garbage collected, um, then that subscription will disappear. And what it is, is by using a weak reference here and using this token mechanism, it means that we don't actually ever have to unsubscribe. Um, the messenger will just take care of unsubscriptions for us. And it's really very convenient, but it is something that's a bit fiddly because if you ever forget to add this token here and this token here, then you will discover you never get the messages you expect, and it's a bit bizarre about why, you know, why is it happening? So the main thing is to always remember you subscribe for a type of message, um, and that when you've done that subscription, you store the token. Right, with that done, we should here get our location message into us, and we need to use it. So I'm just going to use the same type of code as before, and this time it is directly that we'd like to use lat equals location message dot lat. And long equals location message dot long. So that's done. Um, on error is now longer used here in this UI. Um, but what we should be able to do now that's there is we should be able to build location dot core. And hopefully that built. Um, and then we should be able to go off and actually use this in, in some of the UI projects. So I probably won't go through these all in detail because they're all going to be the same type of thing. But all we have to do is go back to, you know, this is the Windows Phone one. Go back there, look for MVVM Cross Messenger. MVVM Cross Messenger. And you should see it there at the top of the list, MVVM Cross Messenger. Um, it's worth saying that there are other messengers. So, you know, Tiny Messenger is another alternative. If you don't like the implementation we've got and the way we use, um, you know, weak references, feel free to use a different one. This one's just neatly packaged for you at the moment within MVVM Cross. Um, and then we install that messenger. So it goes off and installs. 
um, and then what we should be able to do is just use it so we should now if we start up the uh, UI for Windows Phone it should just work only now it's going to be using the alternative mechanism so there you go it's exactly the same app it doesn't really tell you anything about what's going on um, but you know now if we move around still we get exactly the same notifications but it's coming via that messenger mechanism so I hope you know that's kind of showing you how easy it is to add in a messenger um, the messenger is going to come up a few times um, in the coming n plus one steps I will try to explain it again in a better way um, but hopefully you've kind of seen how it works um, and you'll follow through. Offline, I will um, add the messengers to all these other UIs, and it really is just a case of installing it, and then it should just work. Um, but then let me just do it live. So here's the store one, we need to add this one in as well. Um, but what you should also see by doing this is, you know, we are changing the core functionality, we're refactoring that PCL, um, and we really don't have to do much work in the UI projects to satisfy it at all. Um, and you know it's a very straightforward way of, of getting this to work um, there are other things you could have done for example in the uh, let me do something in fact so those should all be updated now I'm not going to bother running them all because you've seen them um, but there are other things we could have done in this in this core location hub slash service um, we could have sent out alternative messages yeah we could have sent out you know could have done some calculations based on lo location we could have sent out things from there. Right, um, I feel like I've explained things very badly. I apologise again for that. Um, I'll come back to Messenger again and do it properly, hopefully. Um, but hopefully you at least got some clue about what was going on in terms of you know, this Messenger mechanism. So if I go back to the slideshow again, hopefully I come back here. Hopefully you understood that we had a Messenger. Um, we had a publisher, and our publisher was this guy, was the location hub, location service. And you can see, you know, it, it just sits there, and he's going to pump out, he's going to publish these messages. In our case, we had just one subscriber, and the subscriber in this case was the view model. And you can see the subscriber here subscribes. And you can see there's a little bit of fiddliness you have to remember in terms of subscribing using a token because of weak references. Um, and then you can see that what happens is the publisher generates a message and in this case it's one of these location messages which just has a lat and a long and you can see where he generates it here this block of code here he just generates his message with a you know this is the sender and the lat and long as the parameters and then he publishes the message and you can see there it goes publishing across to the subscribers and the publish is done here and the subscribers receive it in their you know action notification here is here and then they use it so that's the way a messenger is very quickly put together um, we will be using a messenger a lot once you start using a messenger you seem to uh, you seem to use it quite a lot and quite almost everywhere because it's, it's just a very convenient very loosely coupled mechanism for spreading notifications from one part of your app to another from one software component to one or more others um, and once we've uh, once we keep going through these tutorials I think you'll see it being used quite a lot so apologies it wasn't the uh, cleanest of explanations, but I hope you kind of got the message about messengers. Um, and that is n equals 9, um, and I'll probably be back now after the weekend. Okay, cool.